Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. The Promised Neverland isn't just a really cool title, it actually has a hidden meaning in the latest episode of The Promised Neverland. Yes, Emma, Ray, and all of the other orphan children are still on the run from bloodthirsty demons, and at the end of the last episode, they were seemingly helped out of nowhere by two demons who don't really want to eat humans. And that's all a part of the big surprise in this episode where we finally start to learn a little bit more about the lore of this world and what actually happened between this massive conflict between humans and demons. So the last episode was really surprising and shocking and very different than anything we saw from the very first season of The Promised Neverland. That being that the children are no longer at the Grace Fieldhouse, the orphanage, the farm. Now they're out in the wild, being chased by all sorts of monsters and creatures who want nothing more than to turn them into a double-decker kid's sandwich. Luckily they are saved by these two demons who go by the name of Mujika, the cute little girl demon, and Sanju, who is the badass warrior demon. And what's interesting is that we get to learn that there's actually a couple of different factions of demons, and apparently Mujika and Sanju are actually these heretics. They have these religious beliefs which actually keep them from devouring humans whole, and that's why they decided to actually save these kids basically out of the goodness of their demon hearts. And you can imagine that Emma and Ray are a little freaked out by all of this, and they probably can't trust them almost immediately until they realize that all of the other children are fine, they're being fed, and they're actually being taken care of. The the thing is, while these two demons are very helpful, they're not going to be their caretakers forever, but they are going to help them as they make their way through the world. But before we actually get to that, let's talk about a little bit more of the actual backstory of this world and how it's starting to become a little bit more clear to the viewer. So according to Sanju, who ends up telling Rei and Emma the backstory of this world, in the past, about a thousand years ago, there was this massive war that was going on between the humans and the demons. And eventually it came to a point where they came to an agreement, where they were going to segregate the world into two separate parts, one for the humans and one for the demons. However, the humans actually ended up giving a peace offering to the demons, which was basically allowing them to farm people to eat. Now, why this is is still kind of up in the air, and there's still a lot of things that are sort of dangling and left unsaid. The point is we now know that in this world, there is going to be a safe haven for the humans, and that's basically what's giving Emma and Ray the hope to get them and all the other orphans to this other side of the world. The thing is, apparently no one's ever done this before, at least according to Sanju. However, just knowing that there is a society of surviving and thriving humans out there is kind of remarkable, but it still makes me want to learn a little bit more about these two very different societies and why the fact is that these humans who are from the farm are not allowed to actually go over to the human world, and what would actually happen if some of them actually did escape and make it over to their side? Would it cause some sort of massive conflict? I'm not really sure, but what's interesting interesting here is we get to see where the term the promised neverland actually comes from. This promised neverland is none other than the place where the humans actually live, and it's all because of a promise which was made between the demons and the humans. The rest of the episode was interesting, as Sanju and Mujika did everything in their power to teach these children how to actually survive in this demon-filled world. Hunting, gathering, how to sneak away from the demons, survival skills, they pretty much learn all of it from these characters over the course of the next couple of days, and it's kind of interesting. And again, Again, these children are more than capable. We saw them escape from the Gracefield house, so it's not that out of the realm of the possibility for them to learn like how to shoot a bow or how to collect plants and learn how to survive and hunt. And speaking of hunting, it actually leads to a very devastatingly powerful scene where we get to see that Sanju is actually going to go up top from these caverns and do a little bit of scouting, and Emma wants to come along with him, but so that she can learn how to properly hunt. She knows how to get edible vegetables and things that you can just find in nature, but to actually kill something in order to survive is something that she's never really done before, and this is where she actually learns this. She knows how to shoot a bow, in fact she's quite proficient at it, but it's Sanju who ends up teaching her the importance of taking a life but also respecting it all at the same time. It's not enough to simply just kill an animal and to eat it. You have to respect it for the fact that it's given its life for you to survive. And this is something that's very difficult for Emma to actually come to grips with. Even more so, when she actually does end up killing this small bird, Sanju ends up giving her one of those like weird plants that you stick in someone and it sucks up all the blood. He even refers to it as a vampiric plant. And basically, uh, it sucks up all the blood and everything and makes the, the 
the meat and everything that you're going to eat a little more palatable. But even with this, after killing the bird and using this plant and even praying, it still manages to freak out Emma to the point where she gets a little upset over all of this. And even when she returns, all of the orphans notice there's something a little different about Emma. And the fact of the matter is, she is different. She's matured in a completely different way as she now knows what it means to take a life. So what's the rundown on the latest episode of The Promised Neverland? A pretty damn good episode, I do have to say. After all of the tension from the first episode, I'm glad that this one decided to slow down a little bit and tell us a little bit more about the lore of this world and the interesting characters that actually inhabit it. I have a feeling that Mujika and Sanjo are going to probably be following these children for a little bit longer, and I want them to, as I want to learn a little bit more about their society and why they've broken off from demon society. They don't get into it all that much, aside from a throwaway line where Sanjo's like, yeah, we're basically what's considered a heretic. We're religious zealots in a sense, and I want to know why this is. Also, I just want to learn a little bit more about demon society themselves. In fact, I don't even know if they should even properly be referred to as demons, you know. Even Sanju seems to almost take a little bit of offense at the fact that they are called that, but these little kids, these humans that they've never, like, interacted with before, they have no other way of actually, like, you know, looking at them, aside from straight up just calling them monsters. But they're anything but. They have a surprising amount of emotion, and they're very human in the way that they actually interact with the children themselves, and they're not completely heartless creatures, which is what I think is really fascinating about them. Also, just their overall designs are very different than some of the other demons that we've seen thus far, a lot more human-like, and I'm guessing that the things they wear on their faces is just some sort of like weird bone-like mask, as Sanju is able to lift his up and you can actually see his mouth, but you never get to see their full features like their eyes or anything, which I think is kind of interesting. Maybe they don't even need eyes to see, maybe they can simply sense things in a completely different way, especially with the character of Mujika, who seems to be wearing some weird like visor across her entire face, which covers up most of her features. Despite that, she's the cutest little demon you've ever seen! I said in my review of the first season episodes, but these kids are badass for their ability to not only survive in this world, but to take all of their plight in stride. I mean, they've been through a lot of crazy shit, and now they're hanging out with some monsters in some dark caverns, and they look like they're having the time of their lives. Then again, they've never had freedom like this before, so you have to expect that they're probably pretty happy about that. And while Emma and Ray are without a doubt the most important characters of the series right now, I'm glad that they take the time to develop a few of the other minor characters from the show. I like that they brought back Gilda and Don, showing why they're so important to the group. Gilda in particular was great in this episode, and she basically gives Emma a talking to about the fact that she needs to start talking out loud a little bit more about what she's doing, otherwise everybody's just going to freak out. The moment where she didn't talk about the fact that she was going to pass out and she didn't really have a plan, she gives her this talking to, which is really great because it shows that Gilda can not only be a very sweet sweet and funny character, but she can be pretty freaking hardcore too. She's downright scary in this episode, although it's mostly played for laughs. But at the same time, it's all backed up by the fact that they genuinely care about one another. There is a family dynamic amongst all of these characters, which really is sort of the glue that holds everything together in this entire series. If I were to give a moniker to this episode, it's essentially the training episode. The characters are preparing for the next part of their journey as they head out into an even more dangerous world. And I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. I don't know if any characters are going to die, who's going to survive. The tension is very high right now, considering that the children, according to Sanju, are smack dab in the middle of demon territory, and getting over to the human world is going to be a very difficult journey, I can expect. On the production side of things, again, another really good-looking episode with great-looking characters. Uh, Mujika and Sanjo are really interesting-looking. I love the look of their characters. They're just immediately just plain awesome, Sanju in particular. I have a feeling that, again, like I said, they're going to stick around a little bit. Mujika has been seen a lot in the promotional materials of the season, and I want to see her interacting more with these human children, if only to see the completely different dynamic between what these type of characters are like, as well as a sort of build upon like the relationships between demons and humans and how that's going to affect the rest of the series. There's still so much more that we can actually see from the rest of the show, but the fact of the matter is these kids are out in the wild, they're learning, they're getting more mature, and they're starting to learn a little bit more about the power of death itself. That was the big lesson from Emma in this episode, and it was powerful and it was done in a very good way, especially with her and Sanju going on that hunting expedition. Overall, I really loved this episode. I think it's just as good as the previous, and again, it's just getting me even more hyped for the rest. So, 
I'm gonna give this episode a five out of five. I think it was really solid material and you would do yourself justice to check out the next season of The Promised Neverland. But if any of you did watch the latest episode of the series, I would love to get your thoughts about it and you can sound off in the comment section below telling me what you thought about the latest episode of The Promised Neverland, what you're hoping to see from the future of the series. Let's talk about it, comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. If you did like this video, smack the like button, get your bow and arrow and hit point blank, my friends. I'd also like to take this time to thank all of my patrons. You guys are some pretty classy people, not only watching my videos, but making these monthly donations. Remember, first time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choice, as well as adding your name to this list of super awesome people, the producers of Ace Guru. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.